Now that we have 80 degrees Celsius, the typical running temperature of most modern bikes, the first step would be opening up the oil filler cap. This helps to make the oil flow faster so air can get in and stops burbling and bubbling by making air try to go in the drain hole as oil comes out. It's not only smoother, but less to clean. Now one thing to note is that changing oil too soon beats changing too late, but too soon can be wasteful of good oil and oil runs better after a slight break-in period. Now the first service is about a thousand kilometers or 600 miles. That's because a new engine breaks in and the dealer ships with really low quality oil, partly because they expect you to change at the beginning service interval. The next change I tend to do around 3000 kilometers because the bike's still not 100% broken in, that's around 2000 miles. Now dealers in Japan will say you always have to change at 3000 kilometers. And that's true if you're on a 125cc scooter or smaller that has no oil filter. The oil has nothing to clean it. Now, I'm not saying they're scamming all their other customers because Japanese defamation laws have made it clear to me in the past that saying anything bad about a company is worse than the necessity for free speech. So it's definitely not a scam. They're keeping your engine cleaner. <clears throat> now, if I were to read the manual from Honda Japan, I need to change my oil after the first service every 10,000 kilometers. In most opinions, that is the extreme limit. And part of that may be that they've tested their bike safely can just barely do it. And it looks good for advertising because most customers want to do as little wrenching on their bike as possible and don't want to keep sending money to the dealer. Now, in my experience as a mechanic, 5,000 kilometers is a good range, but since the Transop does have a bigger oil sump than normal, bigger than even the Tracer 900, and it is a low stressed engine, I may in the future stretch that service out. And as you're seeing with the oil draining out, it's not that bad, it's not too black, and there's no shiny sparkly bits in it. If you see shiny sparkling, that means your oil has metal shavings in it, which is not weird for the first service break-in, but it could be concerning over time. Metal wear has to come from the engine. You don't want your engine wearing out. But since it is this clean, I will probably stretch to around 6,000 kilometers next time, and that gets the bike to an even 10,000. But now, let's talk about why I'm changing the oil early. Beyond the extra break-in, it's the end of the season. Japanese summer is finally, at the end of October, ending. In this summer, I have been riding the bike slow off-road, meaning it's been nearly overheating in the Japanese summers that can be over 40 degrees Celsius, which is properly over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I've also done a lot of hot city riding as I up until recently lived in Tokyo. So when it says it's 35 degrees outside and you hop on the highway or the local cities beating off the building's reflective glass and onto the concrete, my thermometer said it was over 45 multiple times with the bike just sitting in traffic and no cooling airflow. Another reason is, how do you ride the bike? I tend to treat this sport bike engine like a sport bike engine. So I get up to the red line all the time. I push the bike's limits, I push my own limits. I come from sport bikes and sport tours, so I intend to treat this like it. But that is another reason you may wear your oil a little faster. And the other two main reasons are the elements. If you get caught in a severe heavy rain or do a too deep river crossing, there is a chance that water got in through the air filter or any other tiny little gaps, which is unlikely, especially with a Honda, but it could happen. And with a lot of off-road, if you don't clean your air filter often enough, you could be getting extra dirt in the engine. But all kinds of dirty situations are opportunities to put things in your engine, which should be blocked by the air filter or come through the oil. Now I'm not changing the oil filter this time because that's supposed to be every second change after you've done the first service. And my experience at Yamaha doing that to hundreds and hundreds of customers' bikes, that seems to be a good stance to take because modern filters are very good. Modern engines and modern oil are very efficient. As an interesting side note, the most environmentally hazardous parts of a vehicle are tire wear, brake wear, and road wear. 
The heavier your vehicle, like an electric vehicle, the worse it is. The lighter your vehicle, like a Euro 5 plus motorcycle, which is now as efficient as a car, is going to be less harmful. So you could argue that I'm being a responsible steward of my environment by not buying an EV and keeping this bike. But I'm not a scientist, and that's not what this video is about. Now filling it back up, on this specific bike, 3.4 liters is what you're supposed to put in when you don't do the filter. 3.6 with the filter, and the 3.9 rating is for an engine rebuild. Now I am using this Castrol fully synthetic power oil because I've used it in the past and I have 1.5 liters sitting around. So why waste it? But if you want to know synthetic versus mineral oil, look at this video. They did a better job than I ever will pretend to do. Now, this video is not sponsored and has no correlations with anything but my opinion and experiences. But Yamalu is made by Motul. So is Honda's proprietary oil. Now, nothing against those companies. They run very good in the beginning. But what I noticed with my Yamalube, around 3,000 kilometers, I got some severe vibrations from the bike. Changing the oil fixed it. When I switched to Castrol Fully Synthetic from a Yamalube Fully Synthetic, I noticed that at 5,000 kilometers, there were no extra noteworthy vibrations. For a parallel twin, this Honda is not a very vibratory bike by my experiences. But now that I've put the oil in, first to the dipstick. I always forget, is it on the stand or is it standing up? Or is it screw the cap in or unscrewed? I don't know why Honda still can't figure out an oil sight glass like all their competition can, but that's one of those things that the aftermarket can't fix for me. I can't drill my own hole in my own engine. But that's good old Honda, waiting till it's far too late to update to make technology that's old the day it comes out. Now as for the test ride, which is always smart to do after an oil change or any maintenance, I did a five kilometer test loop. Now immediately onto the ride, I noticed the smell of burning oil and I panicked and the truck in front of me went right as I went left and the smell went away. But the stress damage stayed in my heart forever. So I went on to do a full five kilometer loop, a little over three miles. And I did notice that after the first few kilometers went by, the engine is running smoother than it did before. Now, five kilometers means nothing. That could just be new oil. So I'll pin a comment after 5,000 kilometers to let you know, am I actually experiencing a better smoothness switching to Castrol as every other time I've left Motul in the rear view mirror? But there you have it. Not a life changing breakthrough video, but if it helped one person take better care of their bike, great. Till next time, this has been Kairu Rider, and thanks for watching.